for the word of God this morning. Bless it, I pray. Help us to rightly divide the word of truth. God, I pray that you'd rebuke the devil from around us today. God, may we have liberty. God, may we uh, preach today that people will understand, God, that we are living in times when it'd be real easy to go back on you. But God, we're also living in times when it's very, uh, very much, uh, Lord, the need that we stay close to thee and stay in fellowship with you. And God, help us to heed the scripture. And God, we'll thank you in Jesus' name for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we read this verse and we see here that uh, that in the book of Hebrews, we understand that it is a book of better things. Thirteen times in the book of Hebrews, you find that word better. And it means the greatest. It means the better. And I like to say more better. Amen. I know that's not proper English, but I like things that are more better. Amen. And so we see the book of Hebrews as being a, a, a message to us of better things, better things to come, better things uh, for believers, and, and the better things of life is for the child of God. In chapter number 1 and verse uh, number 4, we find that Jesus is better than the angels. All this is uh, introduction, by the way. And so we find that Jesus is better than the angels of all the angels of heaven. My Jesus is better than the angels in heaven. He's better than all. You can't find anybody better than him. There's nobody like him because he's better. He, there are better things for the child of God. We live in this world. We walk in this world. We see things going on in this world. But this world is not the end of it, my friend. I'm looking for better things from God. Amen. I'm looking for better things for the church. From God. Always God wants His best for the believer. Always God wants His best for you and I. And there are better things for the believer that we find uh, than this world has to offer. God's got it all and He's got better things for you and I. And then there's a better hope in chapter number 7 in verse number 19. We read of a better hope in Christ Jesus. Amen. The world has nothing to look forward to except uh, dying and going to hell without God. They have nothing to look forward to this world. And the more you look at this world, the dimmer it seems to be in the world that we live in. But for the child of God, there is a better hope. Amen. His name is Jesus. It is in His plan of salvation. And there is a better hope for the child of God. For the lost man, there's a better hope because no reason for a lost man to die and go to hell without God. His hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. So there is a better hope. There's better promises in Hebrews chapter number 8 and verse number 6. The Bible's full of promises. And those made to the believer, amen, will never be broken. The promises of God for the life that He's given us here in this life. The promise of mercy. The promise of grace. The promise of eternal life. Thank God there's better promises from the Word of God to the believer. And then we see that there is a better sacrifice, better than the blood of bulls and goats. Chapter number 9, verse 23, better than the Old Testament sacrifice. There's a better sacrifice, and that's in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for me, amen, that I might have life and that I might have it more abundantly. There is a better sacrifice. His name is Jesus. And then there's chapter 11, verse number 16. Friend, we read of a better country. I love, I love life. I love living in this life. And I know that even, you know, even on the, the worst days, it's better than a lot of people get to live. I'm telling you, I'm a child of God today. But I'm looking forward to a better country. Amen. We, we're filled down here with heartaches and disappointments and sorrows and troubles and doubts and fears. But I'm looking forward to a better country. I'm looking forward to a better place where we'll feel no uh, discomfort whatsoever. We'll have no death. There'll be no sorrow. There'll be no pain. There'll be no worry. There'll be no heart attacks. There'll be no cancer. There'll be no strokes. There'll be no arthritis. Oh, thank God I'm looking for a better country. Amen whose builder and maker is God and if he made all of this that you see around you what must he have prepared for us amen I'm looking for a better country you look the whole world over and I don't think you'll find a well, I know you won't find a better country than what we live here on this earth but friend I'm looking for a better country in the Lord Jesus Christ and then I'm looking in chapter 11 and verse 35 I'm looking for a better resurrection now friend one of these days everybody's going to be resurrected those that are saved resurrects to life 
and those that are lost are, are resurrected to eternity in the lake of fire with the devil and the, and the beast and the false prophet. All those going to spend eternity there. But I'm looking for a better resurrection than that. Hey Amen. I'm looking that if I die and go into the grave, I'm looking that one of these days that grave's going to come open and I'm going to come out. Amen. I'm going to come out of there and amen, those that are alive around me, which I intend to be one of those, I think. And if I'm alive and you're dead and you go on to the grave, friend, when you come up, I'm coming up with you. I'm looking for a better resurrection. Hey, it's there for the believer. Don't it make you just want to just, just want to enjoy your salvation? No, there's better things for it. Then there's better things in chapter 11, verse 40. There's just better things. Now, we, we have things down here. Everybody's got things in this life. <clears throat> You've got the things that you like to tinker with. You've got the things you like to do. But, friend, all that will take a very back seat to the better things that God's got for us. I can't even begin to, to think on the greatness of the better things that God's got for His believers. So we see all this in the book of Hebrews as well as we see the warnings in the book of Hebrews. And, and I'll say it this way, if you're looking forward to the better things, amen, we ought to be living close to God. We ought to be wanting to serve Him and do His will and be better for the cause of Christ. I find myself, you know, looking at the world and I find myself sometimes thinking, you know, what? It, why is it, what's, what's the use? You ever think that? What's the use? Tell you what it is, it's Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Hey Amen. That's why that's what the worth is of being a child of God. That's why we ought to draw close to the Lord. That's why we ought to stand for Him and serve Him and do His will. And that's why we ought, friend, as we gather in the house of God, we ought to gather and worship the Lord. Hey Amen. But we'll look at a few things this morning that are warnings in in a book of Hebrews about things that we could lose. Now, we know because of the Word of God, that we as Christians are eternally secure. Now we know that and we believe that. So we believe that no matter what happens in our life, that we're going to have it. Amen? Now some will be saved and, and be backslid on God. They'll still be saved because I'm eternally saved. Amen? I, he is my everlasting Father. And so I know that. And we see here that we are eternally saved and because, because that... Uh, you know, that we are eternally saved, we should want to live every day for to serve the Lord. Because, not because of what we've done, but because of what He has done for us. We ought to live as, as because we're eternally saved. And then we understand that we are, we are uh, saved and secure because of His complete redemptive work that He has done for us. We ought to want to serve the Lord because He's redeemed us by His blood. We, because He paid our sin debt, because He paid the price for you and I, we should want to serve the Lord and do the will of the Lord. Yet how many times does the devil come along to you every day and say, I'll just give it up? Or does he come along to you today and try to make it hard for you to live a Christian life? Does the old flesh rise up and try to make it hard for you to live a Christian life? Why, certainly it does. The devil, we're facing the devil, the flesh, and the world. We face it every day. And the whole object of those three things is to keep us from serving the living God. But we ought to be determined in our hearts. Beside all else, in the last days that we're living in, we're going to be soldiers. We're going to be workers for God. We're going to stand for what's right. We're going to stand for the truth. And no matter what happens, amen, we're going to stand for God. But there's a danger from the devil and from the world and from the flesh to back down and to step aside and just let the world have it all. Amen. I'm not ready to quit yet, my friend. I'm not ready to give up. I don't want to quit on God. I don't want to quit serving Him. God, help me to be strong, and God, help you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And so we know that if, if today we go on and serve the Lord, Today, if we go on and go out of this world serving Him, we know that when we get to heaven, hey, you don't look to get, don't look to get a lot of rewards down here in this life. Don't, get to, you know, don't look to get a lot of good pats on the back in this life. But I'm telling you what, friend, we ain't laying up treasures down here no way. 
The child of God, the believer, is laying up treasures in heaven. And my reward won't be down here, but my reward's going to be in heaven. Amen. And I'm looking forward to that. God help me to live right. God help me to preach right. God help me to serve right. That when heaven, I'll receive a reward. You say, preacher, I ain't going to live right. Then you won't be long for this world if you're a child of God. You're looking at the discipline of God if you don't live right and serve the Lord and do His will. If we, I know from experience, I know if you backslide on God, God's going to bring you around. He'll straighten you. He'll, you know, He'll straighten you out or He'll lay you out. Amen. You say, do you believe that? Would God do that? Listen, He, He, He promised in His Word that He chastened those that He loves. And I don't like that. Hey, man, I never did like a whooping. I just sure don't like it from God. And friend, but God will do that. I'm, I'm glad, though, that sometimes He does because it makes me know I'm His. Amen. Makes me know that He loves me because sometimes He has to chasten us. I'd rather receive a reward in heaven than chastening. Amen. And so those that are saved will, will certainly, if they've lived for the Lord and served the Lord, then they will certainly, my friend, receive a reward. But if you're saved today and you say, I'm not going to serve God, I'm just going to go the way I want to go, when you get to heaven, you'll receive no reward. Boy, oh, my friend, today, I don't want to live, I want to live in the light of His coming. I want to live in the light of the reward that I can, if I just live for the Lord, If I'll just do my best and serve the Lord, when I get to heaven, I'll receive reward. Now, I've got a feeling that there's a lot of us preachers is going to take a back seat in the the reward line to a lot of these little old men and little old ladies that spend their lives praying, amen, for us. Amen. But, oh, my friend, today, you say, well, I'm not a preacher. I'm not going to receive rewards. Your faithful living will, will, will gain you rewards in heaven if you'll just live for the Lord and be faithful to Him. God help us. I, I want, listen, I want to wear my crown so I can give it to the Lord. I want to gain a crown. I want to gain a reward that I might give it to Him for all He's done for me. How are you living today? How is it between you and God? Are you close to Him or are you a distance from Him? Do you have enthusiasm about serving God or are you just doing it because it's what you need to do? Amen. God help us. So preacher, now that's awful strong. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. I rolled this over and over in my mind. I rolled over in the bed with it last night thinking about it. God help me that I be strong in the power of the might of God. God help me that I be close to Him. God don't let me do what the book of Hebrews tells us. There's a danger of drifting away. Hebrews chapter number uh, chapter number 3. Chapter, I'm all... Chapter 2, verse 1, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. When you slip away, it's kind of like a a ship without a rudder. Have you ever been out in a boat and didn't have an oar? You You can't go nowhere. You stick your hands down the water and try to make it, but you can't go nowhere. And you can't control where you go without a rudder. And, and friend, to be a saved person in this world without the direction of God and without His help and without leaning on Him and without being close to Him is like being out on, a, out on the ocean without a rudder on your boat. And all you can do is just drift around the way the, the way the waves take you. The way the current goes is the way that you'll be taken. And it is the way with Christian life. If we're apart from God, if we're not close to God, then we're just like in this world, we're like a ship without a rudder. We'll go any way the world says to go. We'll do anything the world says to do. Like the prodigal son, he got down in the far country. I'm not preaching that message again, but he got down in the far country. He went anywhere the buddies wanted to take him. That's the way it is for the believer. If you're out of the will of God, if you're away from the plan of God, you're like a ship out on the ocean without a rudder. You're going just this way and that. You might go to church on Sunday morning, you might not. It just depends on which way the wind's blowing. Amen. 
You might give money to the church and you might not. Just depend on which way the winds are blowing or how many bills you got to pay. But I want to tell you something. I'd rather have Jesus. I'd rather have his direction. I'd rather have his leadership. I'd rather him have him direct in the way I'm going than be like a, be like a ship without a rudder. There's a danger, friend, of drifting without God. There's a danger of drifting in this life without His direction, without His hope, and you'll wind up in a mess. I've tried it. I've tried making my own direction. I've tried putting myself where I wanted to go, and it never works, friend. It's always best under the direction and the leadership of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our life is far better when we're directed by Him. Number two, we have a, we, there is a danger of having a, a, a heart of not believing what God tells us to do. Sometimes, my friend, when we get out of the will of God, it's like that we have turned our back on God. Lord, help us not to do that. Say, preacher, I'd never do that. Listen, if you ain't following Him, if you, where are you going? You're going backwards. And if I'm following you down the road, and come here, come here, brother. Come here, brother James. Take off down through there. Walk around the church. I'm following James. Amen. I'm following him. I'm going where he's going. I'm going to do exactly what he's going to do. And I'm following right behind him. And you know what? I really want to follow him close because I don't want to make a wrong turn. But one of some time I might say, I don't like the direction you're going. And what will I do? I turn around. And I go the other direction. I turn around and I walk. What have I done? I've turned my back on my leader. So, friend, it is possible to turn you back on God. It is possible that we turn away and go exactly the opposite direction from where God wants us to go. And what happens when we do that? We wind up in the dark again, amen, still saved by the grace of God. But we wind up out there on like, a, like a ship on the ocean without a rudder, just wherever we're going, but no direction because we're not following God. There is a danger, my friend, of not following the Lord. There's a danger of not following his leadership and not following his direction. Hebrews chapter number 3 and verse number 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it is, while it is called today, lest any of you have be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ. We, If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. Some For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was grieved forty years. Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness, and whom to swear by that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. So we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. Friend, if you want to enter into the, being the rest of God, you got to believe God. You got to trust God. You got to trust his direction. You got to look to him for direction and follow the leader. Amen. How many of you ever played follow the leader? Yeah. Well, you're doing it anyway, whether you know it or not. You're either being led by the world, the flesh, the devil or you're following God I'd rather follow him friend my flesh ain't never done nothing but get me in trouble my old flesh causes my old tongue to say things it shouldn't say sometimes my old flesh causes me to listen or look at things that I shouldn't hear or see sometimes but if I'm following Jesus hey man he's never led me to a wrong fault he's never led me to a wrong place he's never led me to a wrong understanding I'm glad friend that I can follow him follow the leader hey man Hebrews warns us that we not follow anyone but him. We should follow him. We should follow the leader because he'll never, never, he'll never lead you in anything but a plain path. Follow God. Now, there's a danger of us if we get away from God. There's a danger of us being happy with not being mature. Now, we got some little kids in here. I like that. Hey, Amen. I love little kids. Don't worry about them hollering, screaming, crying. Just pay me, just, you know, just pay me attention. I'm not worried about them. You know, when they scream, holler, and have a good time, hey, amen, just, just pay attention to the preacher. Just let them alone. Hey, amen. I, I now preach them. 
Amen, sweetie. She done knocked. She said, I can't overcome him. I'm just going to sleep. She went to sleep. My sister Amy, that little baby's growing. And I've watched it. It come from a little old teeny thing now to a big old teeny thing, but it's still a little baby. Amen. But it's growing. But now if that baby don't grow, you're going to be excited, aren't you? You're going to be worried about that if the baby don't grow. Everybody will. I got to worrying about me when I didn't quit growing. Amen. I quit growing this way and I start growing this way and I'm kind of concerned about that, hey man. But I, at least I'm still growing. Let me tell you something. A, a believer, when one gets saved in the grace of God, they're just like that little baby. They can't do nothing for themselves much. And all they can do is cry out for help. Oh my. All a baby in Christ can do should be to cry out for help. And guess who ought to be there to help? That little young's got 18 people over there that'll help. Amen. Gladly will help. As a believer, if you're a newborn baby in Christ, you've got people all over the church here that'll help you. And we ought to be willing to help those, new, those newborn Christians. We ought to be able to help them. And they ought to be able to grow. But if they don't ever get any help, and if they don't ever, ever step out and, 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 and get the preaching of the Word of God and get the milk and the meat of the Word of God, they're not going to grow up and they're going to live their lives as babes in Christ. I used to think that wasn't possible. But you know, I began to think about that and we think about it logically. If you don't eat spiritual meat, you ain't going to gain no weight spiritually. So there's a danger, friend, if we get away from God, there's a danger of us falling into a spiritual diet with the lack of the teaching of the Word of God, with the lack of prayer, and, and not becoming mature. Now, as I go along in life, I'm getting more mature. I ain't getting older. I'm just getting more mature. That's what we're all doing. Hey, Amen. We're just getting more mature. Now, if, if age goes with it, that's fine, but we're getting more mature. And as a believer, spiritually speaking, we ought to be in a continuous process of maturity. We ain't, listen, we ain't got there yet. I've seen these big proud puffed up people, you know, that knew more Bible than I'll ever, I'll ever forget. Probably, you know, they know everything. And, and, and if, if they don't know it, you know, they know how to make up a good story to make you think they know it. And they puff themselves up and boy, they're just it. They've arrived on that plane where nobody else is ever going to get. Well, I'll tell you something, they ain't there yet. They just think they are. They believe their own foolish lie, and they've not got there yet. And neither have I, and neither have you. I'm learning all the time. Matter of fact, I'm learning how much I don't know most of the time. When I get to studying the Word of God, I'm thinking, Lord, I should have known that a long time ago. And I'm learning what I don't, well, you know, what I don't know. I want to continue. I'm, listen, there's coming a day, friend, when I'm going to get there. <laughs> There's coming a day when I'm going to know it all. Amen. But you'll never see me in that position and I'll never see you in that condition. But the day that we know it all will be the day we get to glory with God. Amen. We'll know Him as He is. He'll see us and we'll know Him. And friend, we'll know all that we need to know when we get to glory. But I ain't got there yet. I'm still getting, I'm still getting older spiritually as well as physically. I know you can't tell it by looking at me, but I'm getting older physically. And guess what? I can't tell it by looking at you that you're getting older physically. But you are, amen, and I am. But spiritually, we ought to be able to see it in us. We ought to be able to see it in us, our spiritual growth, our spiritual maturity. But we find that in Hebrews chapter number 5, verse 11, I'm going to read all this, but we find that, that, uh, that there is a danger of becoming you know, of, of staying immature as Christians. We ought to be daily growing. And, we, and if we do, friend, we don't want to remain babes because if we do, we're never going to accomplish much. Now, little young and out there is very dependable, very dependent upon mama. Mama feeds it. Mama takes care of it and, and dependent upon mama. And it'll be that way until it grows up. Friend, we need always to depend on God but we need to grow, amen. We need to grow spiritually and so that we'll grow up into adult Christians, mature Christians. And like I say, we'll always be growing. So there's a danger of, of, uh, of staying immature as believers or stopping at a place of growth. We want to continue on with the Lord. Then there's a danger of, our, of, of serious backsliding. Now, is there certain degrees of backsliding? Yeah. 
people get totally out of the will of God and totally out of the back, uh, the, the plan of God, I'll say, are seriously backslidden on God. They had darkened the doors of the church in 20 years, and they, you know, they've went so far back on God that, you know, they don't know, they don't know nothing about things anymore because they're backslid on God. Nothing seems to bother them anymore because they're backslid on God. But God's got a way of getting their attention. God's got a way of waking them up. Listen, so that's bad. I don't want to ever get there. Amen. I got almost there one time. I don't ever want to get there where I just don't want nothing to do with church or the things of God. But let me tell you something. If I'm walking with the Lord, if I'm serving Him, if I'm doing His will, and I let down a little bit, you know what? If I ain't going forward, I'm going backwards. Amen. That took me a long time to be able to accept that. So I find out that a lot of times I backslide. Oh, I don't get out there and sin, but I, I back up on God a little bit and say, Lord, I just don't know. And I'll step back a little bit. And you know what? God encourages me. Don't go backwards. Hey, man, there's nothing back there behind you anymore. There's nothing in that back life that you're going to enjoy. They're all you got to do, you want to go forward. There's a danger we're told about in the book of Hebrews about going backwards, about stepping back, about backsliding on God. I've never heard, of, I've never talked to a backslidden Christian that said, boy, it's worth it. And I talked to one one time that, I don't know, I got very serious doubts because he was out of, the, he, he was out, got out of church, left his wife, started shacking up, yeah, shacking up with another woman. And I asked him one day because I knew his testimony, I knew what he was and I, everybody else knew what he was. And I said, are you really happy? You know what he said to me? He said, I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. I'm seriously concerned with people that can live in sin, name the name of Christ, and say they're happy. Amen. When I got out of the will of God, got away from God, I was not a happy camper. Amen. I was not happy. Friend, there's a, there's a danger of backsliding on God. But the only people that can backslide on God is born-again believers. Lost man's just lost. I don't want to get to that place. God, help me that I not backslide on him. And then there's a danger not only of, of backsliding, but is there an answer to backsliding? Yes, it's repent, believe up, repent. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Repent. We'll be right back in fellowship with God. Take right up where you left off with Him because you, you've, been, you know, you've been cleared by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your sins have been forgiven. Amen. That's the easy way out if you'll just repent and turn to the Lord. Confess, Lord, I've backslid on you. God, I want to be back in fellowship with you. Amen. And get back in fellowship with God and get back in fellowship with His church. I got around church members when I was backslid. I got around church members and church people and felt just as felt just as anxious as I could feel because I was afraid any one of me any minute was going to say, uh, ask me how I was doing spiritually. Get around people, you know, especially that was away from where I was at and, and asked me about how church was. And I couldn't tell them. So I'd have to lie, it's all right. You know why? Because I hadn't been there. And that's the way it is. Well, get away from God, you get unhappy. You get nervous. And when you get around people there in church, you wonder, are they going to ask me how church was Sunday? Are they going to ask me, and how, what am I going to say? Hey, friend, there just ain't no happiness in being away from God. Your hope is in the Lord. Your hope is in Him. And my hope is in Him. And God help me to be faithful to Him. If, you, if you're here this morning, you backslid on God, amen, repent. And then also there's a danger in Hebrews chapter number 10. There's a danger of, of deliberately committing sin, willfully sinning. When there's something you do and you know you're not supposed to do it, but you do it anyway, that's willful sin. God help us that we not be there. God, help us that we not be willful sinners. And then in Hebrews chapter number 12, I've got two more here and we'll be finished. Hebrews chapter number 12, uh, there is a danger of being, being careless in our Christian life. Now that's where most of us, I think, have the biggest dangers, just being careless Christians. You tell your youngins when they go out to play, be careful. And my wife tells me when I go hunting, be careful. Be careful of what? Don't fall out of the tree. Don't fall in the creek. Don't shoot yourself in the foot. 
Don't shoot somebody else in the foot. Be careful. And we're, listen, I'm going, I'm go, you know, I plan on doing some hunting this year, and my wife's going to say when I leave, be careful. Listen, we're out in this world every day, and you know what God tells us? Be careful. Be careful what you're doing. Be careful who you hang out with. Be careful what you say. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful, little mouth, what you say. For the Father up is above is looking down in love. So be careful. Amen. Be careful. How do you be careful?